I competed in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel's second anniversary Invitational. Ami invited eight duelists and split us up into two teams, the Hungry Burgers versus the Doom Donuts. That's my team. The winning team gets trophies, and each winning member gets a giant Ash Blossom card, plus some other Master Duel goodies. We were each paired off against a different opponent, two non-Yu-Gi-Oh! gaming creators, the two idiots, and two titans of the game. And then there's me, paired off against Paulo Gonçalves a competitive Yu-Gi-Oh player from Brazil with over 40 premier Yu-Gi-Oh event tops and victories. He's literally got his own wiki page listing out all of his accomplishments. This guy is an absolute monster and I'll have to beat him if I want our team to win. Was this Konami's idea of a sick joke? And nobody has faith in me either. When they posted the matchup the week before, everyone agreed that I'd get cooked. The commentators and even my own team captain seem to think I'm the underdog. And you know what? They're probably right. I'm just a silly Yu-Gi-Oh tuber who makes videos with eBay mystery boxes and starter decks from 2002. How could a filthy cat casual like me possibly hope to beat one of the most decorated Yu-Gi-Oh players of all time? Would I even be able to take a game? Well, I'll tell you how I did it. So going into this event, I knew I needed to prepare big time. I wanted to play a deck that was both competitive and still fun for me. Konami had banned most floodgates and blowout cards for the tournament, so I wouldn't be able to rely on those for a cheap win either. I ended up going with a deck I've actually been playing both in real life and Master Duel for a while now. Vanquished Souls. Our monsters based on fighting game characters, and they have a mid-range playstyle that's perfect for me. First order of business was grinding the Master Duel ladder all the way up to Master Rank 1 to get some high level experience with the deck. It wasn't easy, but I finally managed to do it and was feeling pretty confident. Also, I asked Jesse Cotton, the GOAT, for some deck building advice before the event. And with all that, the day of the event finally came and I queued up for my match with Paulo. Right, so I started off by normal summoning Vanquish Soul Rosin, and it goes ahead and gets Ash Blossom. This is totally, you know, within my expectations, I have to say. Um, basically, with Vanquish Soul Rosin, the whole Vanquish Soul deck is not particularly uh, susceptible to hand traps. Like, obviously, things getting Ash Blossom can hurt, like, you know, with any deck. But the good news is that, like, this isn't a deck that, like, loses automatically to Max C, per se. You can kind of just get away with, like, one special summon and, you know, pass your turn still and be, like, all right. So, um, yeah, Rosin comes out, gets Ash Blossomed, nothing too special there. See what happens next. Yeah, so I went ahead and linked off my Vanquished Soul Rosin into Rock of the Vanquisher. This is their Link monster. So basically, it kind of protects itself from attacks while it's on the field and you have another Vanquished Soul monster. But more importantly, each turn, as a quick effect in the main phase, you can either get back one of your Vanquished Souls from Grave or summon one from hand. And that's obviously, like, a really huge part of the strategy because summoning stuff like Rosin back is a big deal. And um, getting them back from the grave is just a kind of re a recurring bit of advantage. A funny thing here, too, just to note, is that I, in this duel, like, I was live streaming this because we all had to, like, live stream the event. I, like, did not speak basically a word to my chat. I just ignored chat because I was, like, totally, like, zoning in and focusing. And now uh, you can see Paulo doing the same. I think he was recording this from the Konami office as well. So, uh, let me try to remember. I went ahead and used its effect and just got Rosin back to my hand. This is my favorite part about this deck. So, the fact that he used Ash Blossom here does not, uh, it's obviously like very good because it meant that I wasn't able to like search for Vanquish Soul Xiaolong and kind of make a more extended play. But because I can just make Rock of the Vanquisher and get back Rosin and then next turn use Rock of the Vanquisher's effect to special summon Rosin is a very, uh, it makes it not feel as bad when you get hand trapped. So pretty cool. I go ahead and set one card. Don't remember what this is. I think we'll probably find out shortly. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like an Imperm. Uh, that feels like, if I'm remembering correctly, I think it was infinite impermanent. So he takes his turn. I don't know what he's playing yet until like right when you know, he actually like plays his first card. So he summons Zodiac Thoroughblade. So at this point, I was actually so relieved because I was terrified of how good uh, a deck like maybe Branded or Labyrinth or, you know, something like that in the hands of a talented player like Paulo. I was like, oh my god, like those are already really rough matchups for Vanquish Soul as it is, but if they're played by him, then there's just absolutely no chance of victory, like barely any, right? So um, what's cool is that Zodiac is obviously a slightly older theme, which kind of helps. It's not like as just absolutely insane, but it's also a very strong matchup for Vanquish Souls in general, mostly because like Vanquish Soul monsters can kind of get away from the targeting effects of stuff like Zodiac Dryden, and so they're just tougher to pin down. Um, and as you'll see in a moment here, I've also got a little bit of a trick that I was able to use to prevent the Zodiac monsters from ever really making their second boss monster, Zeus. So yeah, he summons Thoroughblade. I didn't imperm it because I don't really ever think that there's much use in imperming Thoroughblade. He goes into Zodiac Hammer Kong. This is kind of typical Zodiac stuff. Then he makes Tiger Mortar. Not a huge deal, just kind of attaches something from the graveyard. So 2800 attack, obviously pretty scary. 
And finally, Tiger Mortar gets Xyz summoned into... Oh yeah, I was gonna say finally, I forgot they have to make Shack and Nine. Can't forget about that. And then finally, we make uh, Zodiac Dryden with four materials. So for those of you guys who don't know, Zodiac Dryden, it's their Xyz monster. It can just detach a material and pop a face-up card as a quick effect. Very scary for most decks, at least when it's like, you know, paired with other things. And the idea here, of course, would be that he could, um, you know, pop any of my cards and disrupt me. One cool thing is that when Vanquish Soul monsters do get targeted by those sorts of effects, they can sometimes trade out for one in their hands. So that usually helps. But the big, like, threat here is just its attack points. So he knows exactly what zone to place a Zodiac Dryden in. And there's a reason why. So I use Rock of the Vanquisher here. I use its effect to special summon a Vanquish Soul monster from my hand. He uses Max C. Scary, but again, not a big deal. I'm only planning on really doing one special summon here if I can get away with it. Yeah, I think Paulo was using Max C here either because he had a second one in his hand or just because he wanted to simply get more card advantage for like setting traps and stuff in main phase two or hand traps to draw into in main phase two. I know he loves putting hand traps in his deck. That's kind of what he's infamous for. Because he put um, Zodiac Dryden in this column, it makes it harder for me to use Vanquish Soul Rosin's effect because Vanquish Soul Rosin can reveal a um, fire and a dark monster in my hand to destroy all the monsters in its column. But he was smart because he put Dryden underneath Rock of the Vanquisher, and that meant that if I wanted to be able to pop um, his Zodiac Dryden with my Vanquish Soul Rosin, I would have to also lose my Rock of the Vanquisher in the process. Anyways, though, he's smart. He uses Zodiac Dryden right off the bat and just targets Vanquish Soul Rosin. By doing this, it's a really big deal because it means I actually can't chain Rosin's second effect. The Vanquish Soul monsters can um, not, like, they can only use one of their effects per chain. So, because I'm using the search effect on summon, I can't actually do anything else. Um, I can't use its second effect. As you can see, I kind of reel back in my seat here because it's like a big, a big thinking moment. Him targeting Rosin means I'm not going to be able to use Rosin's like kind of just destruction effect in the column. But more importantly than that, I'm deciding, I think at this point, whether or not I want to use Imperm or I might have had something in my hand that I wanted to swap into. Uh, let's see what I ended up going with. Yeah, so this is where I use Infinite Impermanence and I negate Dryden's effect. I needed to do that because I had already decided at that point that I was going to use Vanquish Soul Rosin and just, you know, lose the Rock of the Vanquisher if it meant getting rid of Zodiac Dryden. And um, that's obviously, th so this changes a lot of things. Because I negated Infinite Impermanence, or use Infinite Impermanence to negate Zodiac Dryden, its attack goes down to zero, meaning that it's not going to be able to, like, get in an attack either. So now, if he wants to make Zeus, he's going to have to summon Zodiac Borobo somehow, and like that would maybe be a way of doing it, but yeah. So Imperm resolves, still main phase one. He does use Zodiac Dryden and makes Zodiac Borbo. He's smart. He makes Zodiac Borbo in a different column, so that way I absolutely cannot, um, you know, destroy Borbo with Rosin's effect. So um, what I do instead is, even though I'm under Max C, I know that my priority is preventing him from summoning uh, Divine Arsenal Zeus because Zeus, with as many materials as this thing's gonna have, would be absolutely terrifying to my strategy. So I use Rosin's first effect <clears throat> to prevent it from being destroyed by card effects, which I could, I could not have used that in response to Dryden. Like I said, I couldn't chain, um, it can't use two of Rosin's effects in the same chain. So I use this effect to be indestructible. That's not that important. What's important is that I revealed Vanquish Soul's Zhao Long to use that effect, which lets me use Zhao Long's effect and summon it from my hand. So this means that he is gonna get another draw with Max C. Um, it's unfortunate, but it's just kind of how it goes. But this is still really, really crucial to my strategy because it means that he's not going to be able to uh, attack with his Zodiac Borbo with like attack directly and, you know, summon Zeus or anything like that. I think the mistake that I made here, though, is I probably could have uh, used Vanquish Soul Rosin in the battle phase once he'd committed to like the battle phase and all that. So that way, uh, when I summon Zhao Long and switch Borbo, there'd be no other plays for him to make. Me making it here in main phase one meant that he was then able to use the Tinky that he'd drawn from the Max C. So he gets to like stay in his main phase and kind of get more searches. At this point I was afraid that he might get some Tri Brigade cards because I think those were all completely allowed in this event. So I thought, oh my god, like am I facing Zodiac Tri Brigade? Turns out I wasn't. He just searched for Zodiac Ram Ram, so not the end of the world. He then uses Zodiac Barrage, <clears throat> destroys Tinky, summons another Thoro Blade. And at this point it's kind of like, well... Uh, this is a little bit more trouble, not too much though. So it's just another monster in the field. When he goes to attack with Zodiac Borbo, I decided to activate Vanquish Soul Zhao Long's effect. I reveal one fire monster and I get to change the battle position of a monster in the field. So I'm gonna be using this to change um, Zodiac Borbo to defense. So the, the commentators kind of talk about this. Be 
Yeah, I changed Vorbo to defense so that he can't summon uh, Zeus on me later. Yeah, he has to pass his turn because Thoroughblade can't swing over anything. And <clears throat> this is awesome. This is like a really great position to be in. Yeah, he goes to main phase two. Since he has an attack with an Xyz monster, he's not really going to be able to um, do too much else with this turn. He just makes Drill Diver Vespinado, which is like a pretty decent card. You can just kind of overlay it on stuff. But uh, this is not a huge threat. It does float cards when it's destroyed, though, so, you know. There's that. Anyways, he sets the card face down, and I think that's like... Oh, okay, so I think he ends his turn. So I start my turn off. That's from his own, like, words. But, you know, it definitely looks like he prepared for this event. He does, yeah. It looks like he knows how to use this Vanquishal yeah. strategy quite well. I mean, yeah, see, that's the thing. Everybody thought, like, I, just because, like, I make casual Yu-Gi-Oh! videos with, like, old-school stuff that I like, don't know how to play well with Yu-Gi-Oh! I was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, I gotta produce people wrong. Turn starts, I use my uh, Vanquishal Heavy Burger, and the plan is to return Vanquishal Rosin to my hand so I can normal summon it again. But uh, he changed the second maxi, which I'm assuming he probably had the second maxi, and that's why I used the first one in, like, um his this last turn that's just a guess i'm not sure so two max c's actually that i'm gonna have to deal with in this game i chain my vanquish soul caesar valius to it so um the idea here was that if i chain uh caesar valius i can actually return my vanquish soul rosin to my hand and it won't let um vanquish soul heavy burger resolve and so that means that he'll be getting uh no draws for that he chains solemn strike which you can see uh, my reaction is just like oh my god this is crazy but this isn't actually that bad, and here's why. So this interaction seems like he kind of got the upper hand on it, but I kind of disagree. So basically think about it this way, right? I used Vanquishal Heavy Burger trying to return Rosin to my hand so that I can like summon it again and get another search and all that. He uses Max C so that he'll be able to draw off of it. I use Caesar Valius in my hand so that he won't get a draw from Max C. He uses Solemn Strike and um, Caesar Valius. The good news with all that though, is that Heavy Burger still resolves, and Ryzen still goes back to my hand, and now he's down a Solemn Strike, which is a really strong card, more so against Ryzen than it is against other cards. So I'm not gonna call this a bait, per se, but you could certainly view it that way. Uh, and the monster being in my graveyard, like Caesar Valleyus, doesn't really matter very much, because like next turn I could use Rock of the Venture to get it back. So, Heavy Burger gets summoned, he gets to draw a card from Max C, this is not a problem though, if you actually take a look at the field here, this is the only special summon that I'll actually have to do this turn. So then I normal summon Vanquish Soul Raisin again here, and I get, you know, its effect to search. He uses Ash Blossom on it at this point, not a problem. I do not mind this Ash Blossom at all because Raisin, I don't lose any card advantage in this way. I feel like I've been able to kind of deplete a lot of his resources. I've gotten through Ash Blossom, Maxi, and Solemn Strike at this point, and I still have basically all of my cards. I only lost one card in this exchange, and he's lost like three. He's gotten to draw one card though, so I mean, I guess it kind of counts. Anyways, so at this point, I go to my battle phase, and now I can pretty safely attack all of his monsters. Once again, um, I'm able to use Vanquish Soul Xiaolong's effect to switch um, the Xyz monster that he has, was it Despinado, to defense mode, and so that way it'll be pretty safe to attack. I go ahead and uh, use Rosin's effect, revealing a fire in the dark. I had Bistil Magnumit in my deck, never got summoned, to destroy Thoroughblade. This is just so that I have um, Rosin free to attack whatever he brings back. So Xiao Long attacks. I destroy Vespinado. He's going to use this effect. He's going to bring back a monster from Grave. I think he gets Zodiac Ram Ram because it can get another card when it's destroyed. That's okay. I use Heavy Burger. I attack Ram Ram. Ram Ram gets destroyed. It summons back another Zodiac monster. So he gets back Zodiac Dryden. This isn't a threat though because it doesn't actually have any materials. So I'm able to destroy it with uh, my Vanquish Soul Rosin. And this puts me in a pretty good position, honestly. Like I've got all my cards in the field. I still have Rock of the Vanquisher in the field. Um, I use Heavy Burger's effect to go ahead and draw an extra card. This is one of those effects that I will typically just use kind of towards the end of the turn, depending on what I like. It's kind of weird. Sometimes I feel like I should be using this effect earlier in my turn just to get more options at the start, but it just depends. Anyways, so um, at this point, I use Rock of the Vanquisher and um, its effect to get back Caesar Valleys from my graveyard. He uses Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. Now, this, again, is something I'm totally okay with. I love this trade because in this simplified game state, Rock of the Vanquisher got to add back that card from Grave for free. So him using Ghost Bell on it doesn't bother me because look how few cards he has now. So this is just kind of me whittling down his resources, and now he's drawing, but he only has two cards in hand and a Zodiac Barrage in the field. 
Now, Zodiac Barrage is scary because it can summon another Zodiac monster, which means that, like, I'm going to have to deal, once again, with um, the potential for, like, dealing with Zeus or Dryden. But, as you'll see, that's not too big of an issue. First, though, during the draw phase, I activate Heavy Burger's effect and reveal a dark to get a draw. It's important to use this in the draw phase so that it does not open up the ability for him to use Triple Tactics Talent because I wouldn't have used an effect during the main phase. So anyways, we skip over to his main phase one, uses Zodiac Barrage's effect, and at this point, I chain my own Maxi, so you can see Maxi's made a huge impact in this game. And I think at this point, this is a, the worst possible time for me to use Maxi. We actually both laughed about it, as you can see in the, uh, in the player cam. So he summons Whiptail, and at this point, I don't really know that he can do very much, because under Maxi, I'm just going to get to draw so many cards for him to, like, try to go into the ladder of Xyz monsters that it kind of doesn't really matter. Um, turns Whiptail into Hammer Kong. I get a draw from that. Turns Hammer Kong into Dryadent. So he kind of tried to minimize the amount of uh, special summoning that he did. And he uses Dryadent's effect to try to pop a card in the field. He goes for Vanquish Soul Xiaolong. And uh, that's not really a huge issue anymore. Because even though Vanquish Soul Xiaolong, I think in this exchange, ends up getting destroyed because I don't know if I had a card to trade it out with, I still am able to use its effect right here um, to change the battle position of Dryden so it still, just in case, would not be able to get an attack in in this battle phase. And that means he's going to have to still summon another monster if he wants to try to make Zeus here. So yeah, I put Dryden in defense mode. He overlays what's he put on top of it. Zodiac Tiger Mortar, that's another draw for me. And then I use my Rock of the Vanquisher and add back Caesar Valius. It would have been nice to have Caesar Valius earlier so that I could have just bounced Xiaolong like back to my hand and then summoned Caesar Valius and I still could have like chained Xiaolong's effect and switched his monster defense. It would have been nice, but I tend to wait on using Rock of the Vanquisher and stuff until I absolutely have to because again, I'm usually trying to avoid triple tactics talent and stuff like that. So that's kind of the thought process. Anywho, so he uses Tiger Mortar to put Thoroughblade underneath it as material. I go ahead and activate Caesar Valius at this point, because now my goal is to just summon Caesar Valius out, and Caesar Valius has the ability to pop his card, so I'm going to ensure that he will not be able to, or my goal is at least, to ensure that he will not be able to have an Xyz monster like Borbo to attack with and make a Zeus with. So, he gives up game one, and as you guys can see, I am very, very, very relieved. Because at this point, you have to consider, right? Like, at this point, I have already done the impossible. Nobody thought I was even going to take a game against this guy, and I'm now taking game one. And you can't say that Maxi is the actual thing that saved me here, because I never actually got to use any of the cards that Maxi even drew for me, and I had to play through two of his. So, just, like, something to kind of think about, right? Okay, anyways, so let's hear what the commentators have to say, and then we'll kind of switch quickly into game two. So, um, game two starts, he starts off with Pot of Desires, which is a much more preferable start for him. He's obviously going first, and so Pot of Desire is really good in Zodiacs. It usually lets them kind of see their hand traps, especially dangerous from a player like Paulo, who, um, he really likes his hand traps. So him having more cards in hand is very frightening. Okay, so he starts off with Fire Formation Tinky. Um, he normal summons Ram Ram. Okay, now here's a really crucial play that happens that uh, a lot of people didn't understand. So he uses Ram Ram here, and at this point I actually have Max C in my hand. I don't use it on the normal summon of Ram Ram, though. I actually wait. He exes summons, makes Hammer Kong, and it's at this point that I activate Max C. Now, I think a lot of people who are watching didn't understand why I waited for Max C here. My goal was to, I could have used Max C when he normal summoned Ram Ram and like it would have been all right, but my goal was to have him like waste one extra deck monster doing it first. And now, whatever he decides to do, like if he decides to go into Dryden or something, it won't be as big of a, like, you'll see. Yeah, we both laughed about the Max C here. See, they thought I didn't have the toggle on, but no, I, I did do that on purpose. So now, because I use Max C, he's going to go straight into Dryden. But in going into Dryden, he's going to get like two pops on Dryden's effect, but it doesn't matter because that Dryden's definitely leaving the field next turn, and he had to lose a Hammer Kong in the process. So I'm sure he might have been playing Pot of Avarice, but for me, getting rid of a few more extra Zodiac resources from their extra deck is a really big deal. Because I play like uh, for little optimizations like that, and it's always my goal. Anyways, this forces him to pretty much end his turn with just a Dryden, which is an interruption. He sets a card, I'm guessing it's like Imperm, 
uh, strike, something like that. I start my turn off. I use Pot of Prosperity. I know he has a lot of hand traps, so I'm figuring this might just get Ash Blossomed. Looks like he's thinking about doing it, but um, I don't know if he ends up doing it. He doesn't. Okay, so I get to reveal six. I see Rosin, which is obviously my favorite thing to see. So I get Rosin in my hand. Normal summon it in the column that Zodiac Dryden is in, so that way I can uh, destroy everything. Or attempt to, anyway. He's going to have to use Zodiac Dryden basically here if he doesn't want me to be able to use Rosin's effects to destroy Dryden. You can tell he's thinking about it, and... Um, he doesn't have Solemn Strike, it appears, because if he had Solemn Strike, he would definitely just use it on Rosin here. You can also see me shaking my head at the Master Duel music, because I love uh, the Master Duel themes, just in general. They're great. So, yeah, uh, I think it's a tough decision for him to be in. If he, like, using Dryden to pop uh, Rosin would be, obviously, like, <sighs> that's not preferable. Like, I can tell he wants to save that sort of effect. But it doesn't look like his face down card is, like, anything usable here, so... Anyways, he lets me resolve it. I get Vanquish Soul Heavy Borger, and it's at this point. I go ahead and use Rosin's effect. Now, here's the good news. Um, if he uses Zodiac Dryden here to pop my Rosin, then it won't actually destroy Dryden because there won't be a column that Rosin's in. So I think that's why he goes ahead and uses um, Dryden's effect here. Let me double check, make sure. He's really thinking. Yeah, okay, so he uses Dryden and does target Rosin, so that way it can save Dryden. You can tell he does not want to have to do this. It just, it just sucks. It's just, Zodiac, it's, it's a rough time. And he already knows that I searched for Vanquish Soul Heavy Borger, which I go ahead and chain, so that's going to return my Rosin, so it won't even really get popped, but at least it does protect his Dryden. Doesn't matter, though, because it's used its effect now, which means that Heavy Borger is free to swing over it. You can tell he's just in <laughs> visceral pain. Um, and because I revealed a monster, I'm also going to summon Xiaolong from my hand. So I go ahead and summon Xiaolong, and you can tell Paulo's just not too pleased. Look how we have the synchronized, uh, look at the synchronized, like, just both our hands and our faces. Uh, I don't know why this is so funny to me. I just, it's, it's a fun, I, I love little moments like that. You can tell we're, we're both pretty into this. So I just decided to play it safe, go straight to battle phase. And my goal is to attack Dryden, and because I go for lots of little fun optimizations, I do use my Zhao Long's effect and um, switch Dryden to attack position just to deal a little bit of extra damage. Since I'm under Pot of Prosperity anyway, the damage is going to be halved, but it's okay because, hey, you know, a little extra damage is a little extra damage. Um, instead of dealing, what is this, 1900 though, it's only going to do like 950. And I attack with Heavy Borger. I can't use Heavy Burger's draw effect this turn because I've used Pot of Prosperity. So uh, I think it's at this point that I do a, the, the just burn effect. But first, Triple Tactics Talent. So this was a huge, huge card. I could have honestly used this in Main Phase 1. I just thought it would be a little bit more fun to use it in Main Phase 2. I don't think I had like any more reason for it than that. Uh, so probably would have been smarter to use it in Main Phase 1 when I think about it. Because that way I could have like seen his hand and seen if it been like safer to keep extending so maybe that's a bit of a mistake on my part anyway uh so yeah i use triple tactics talent since he's used dryden's effect this turn i get to take a uh glimpse at his hand and it's double nibiru ghost bell and zodiac barrage which is like pretty rough because i've summoned three times this turn and so i can ensure that i won't be um playing into nibiru and zodiac barrage is obviously his really good starter card so, uh, I send that one right back to the deck, and that kind of ensures he's just not going to really be able to do anything this turn. But I wasn't done yet, because I also deal my burn damage with Heavy Borger. It's halved, it's only 750, but not a big deal. Yeah, Paul loves his hand traps, but Nibiru can definitely come back to bite you if your opponent just not playing a deck that kind of plays into it or whatever. So anyways, uh, for my fourth summon, I believe, this turn, I link off Heavy Borger into um, Rock of the Vanquisher. And I'm going to use Rock of the Vanquisher's effect to add a monster from my grave back to my hand and then attempt to bait the Ghost Bell. You can tell he's just like, oh man, well I guess I have to. So he uses Ghost Bell just to negate it. Doesn't really matter because next turn it's going to be able to get a card back regardless or summon one. So it was just a bait to kind of like pull out even more cards from his hand. That's always my, uh, that's the way I like to play. I like to deprive my opponent of their resources. So 
Passes back to his turn. Um, he, I know he has two Nibiru's in his hand that are just completely dead. So whatever he drew is just what he's got. He goes to battle phase. Um, I don't take the bait or anything and use my Rock of the Vanquisher because I could have used Rock of the Vanquisher, summoned something, and then maybe he could have been trying to use like evenly matched here. Um, but I decided not to take that bait. And uh, you can tell he's like, oh darn, that didn't work. So it's uh, to his main phase two. I think he just. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's where I was like, okay, it's main phase two, I'm safe to use Rock of the Vanquisher, use its effect to summon a monster. He does chain Maxi, which is going to be helpful for him, he gets to draw one card from it. I go ahead and chain Zhao Long's effect, just get an extra search. Get a couple of cards. And then he is going to get his draw of um, off my Vanquisol Caesar Valius. I plan to summon Vanquisol Rosin here to get a search and then switch to Caesar Valius in also in that main phase and get a pop. But since he used Max C, I just decided to go straight for Caesar Valius because Rock the Vanquisher lets me do that. I can just choose which one I want to summon. So there was no commitment, which is really nice. And at this point, I've got a Fire, Dark, and Earth monster in my hand, so I'm actually going to be able to use Caesar Valius' pop effect. So when we get to the end phase, I go ahead and reveal my three. And uh, Apollo uh, has to concede that one because it's just like, yeah, there's nothing you can really do. You can see me celebrating in the, in the mic here. Let's see what they have to say. Very interesting series so far. Rough for Apollo from the get-go, and it was kind of yeah. rough for him last year. I feel kind of bad for him because Apollo is a fantastic player, but uh -huh. like the hands just haven't been there for him uh, in this tournament so far. I know they kind of faltered last year, the first year in uh, Invitational, but... You know, he's, not, he's down but not out. We aren't playing best of three. It's three full yes, games, so they yeah. are going to play that third game. So he has a chance to get those 20 more points and get his team back into the lead in this really close race. Yeah, important distinction as we had seen from that first one. Even no, yeah, okay. So let's skip to the third game. So, uh, spoiler, this is actually the game that I unfortunately end up losing. I kind of flub it a little bit at the end. I will show you guys that, though, because uh, a true champion does not just ignore yeah, his losses. So, um... We start off, he goes first, summons Thoroughblade, pitches a card, gets a draw. Let's fast forward a little bit here. Uses Thoroughblade, makes Chiaconine. Chiaconine summons Bunny Blast. Uses Barrage, sends um, Bunny Blast uh, to summon Thoroughblade. I think Bunny Blast also has an effect when he goes to Grave. Yeah, lets him get a Zodiac back to hand. So he's kind of going for a, like a resource uh, play here as well. At least that's kind of how I was seeing it anyway. Zodiacs with resources are pretty scary. Looks like he's not too happy with his hand because he's kind of shaking his head. Uses uh, Tiger Mortar. Gets a new card underneath it for attack points. Makes Hammer Kong. Turns Hammer Kong into Vespinato, turns Tiger Mortar into Borbo, turns Borbo into Dryden, sets a card, and ends his turn. Normally this would not be a super scary board to deal with, but as you guys will see, this goes a little bit wrong for me. So, I start my turn off and I use Infernoble Arms Durandal. It's going to let me equip it to his Drill Driver, and um, I'm going to use it to search for Rosin. Yeah, I equip it to my opponent's monster, and it's going to let me get a uh, search of a fire warrior. I get rosin. So I normal summon rosin. I use its effect. At this point, if he has solemn strike, I'm in trouble. He uses solemn strike, I'm in trouble. This is the reason why Solemn Strike is so good against Vanquish Soul is just because like they can't trade out to dodge it. Your Rosin just like gets negated and destroyed, and you can't trade it, and you can't turn it into like a Link monster. Like if it had gotten you know negated by Ash, I could still at least turn it into my Link monster and maybe be okay. But Strike just just gets it off the field. Spell Speed Three, very brutal. But thankfully, I have Stake Your Soul, the sort of Plan B, and you can tell Apollo is just not. He's just not happy. I didn't know if he had Ash, but I assume he didn't. Um, he used Strike on Rosin, so he could have maybe had it, but I guess if he had Ash, he might have used it on Durandal. So here's where the problem comes in. Stake Your Soul lets me reveal a monster and then summon a Vanquish Soul monster with the same attribute but a different name. What I plan to do here is reveal the Vanquish Soul Heavy Borger in my hand to summon a Vanquish Soul Dr. Madlove for my deck. I misclicked, and I clicked 
Dr. Mad Love and summoned Heavy Borger from my deck. You can see me make this reaction face because I was like, oh my god, I totally screwed this up. Yeah, so now I'm really upset because I summoned Heavy Borger. And Paulo catches on to this immediately. Because now he knows I can't return Heavy Borger to my hand to summon a Heavy Borger, like, from my hand. And now, like, the Vector Soul Dr. Mad Love that's in my hand, I can't normal summon it because I've already normal summoned Rosin. So I'm really kind of stuck here. So, what I decided to do is just make the best of a bad situation and just try to get a draw. Yeah, so he pops Dryden here, and unfortunately, I did not have a way to recover Heavy Borger, or save Heavy Borger and get it back to my hand. Thankfully, I had Vanquish Soul continue, so this did let me continue the turn a little bit longer. Um, I make Vanquish Soul Rosin, but there is a bit of an issue here, which is basically that, like, Rosin can't use its, like, search effect or anything again, so I just go to pop everything in the column and destroy Dryden. It might not have really been the best idea, I probably could have just destroyed Vespin Auto, and, but then he would have floated, so, like, it's just kind of whatever. Um, anyway, I turn it into Rock of the Vanquisher, and here's where my mistake came in. So I use Rock of the Vanquisher, and I summon a Vanquish Soul monster from hand, forgetting that he plays Nibiru. So I summoned Dr. Madlove because I was really desperate to get the Dr. Madlove summon out of my hand after um, I'd made that fumble with Stake Your Soul. So I do get Vanquish Soul Dr. Madlove, but I use Dr. Madlove's effect, and this is my second big, big error. I got Vanquish Soul Dust Devil, thinking, okay, I can switch his monsters to face down defense position to stop some Xyz summons. I should have gotten my trap card Snow Devil here. Um, because now, I just use, like, Mad Love's effect to reduce his attack, and this is all the verification he needs. To drop his Nibiru. So, yeah, because I had to go for so many extra summons, I get nibiru here. My Heavy Borger does not get summoned because I, um, let me turn this down a little bit. Yeah, I um, have to, I just have to keep, like, a uh, heavy burger in my hand, and it all came because I messed up my click on Stake Your Soul. So, so now, now this game is looking really bad. I get an Ibiru token, but I just have to end my turn by setting a uh, Dust Devil, but I don't have any Vanquish Soul monsters, so I'm not going to be able to use it. And so, he uses Zodiac Barrage, summons Thoroughblade. And we're going to kind of speed through this because it's painful and it's more easy for me to skip through most of my losses. Summons a lot of Zodiac monsters, uses Dryden to pop my token, and now he has enough damage to win. So, um, the main reason why I could have searched for Vanquish Soul Snow Devil, the trap here, is because the two cards that I had in my well, I had a couple of cards in hand, but the cards I had in my hand were um, a, another Raisin and I had a Heavy Borger, obviously. And so what I could have done is use Snow Devil to summon Raisin, probably in one of the columns of one of these monsters, and then use Raisin's effect to, like, nuke all that stuff, summon Xiaolong because I revealed a card, use Xiaolong to switch one of his monsters to defense, and survive the turn and maybe live to see another day. That might or might not have worked, but um, it did not work because he had enough damage to kill me. And uh, so anyways, that's uh, basically the game. I know this uh, video took a little bit longer than what I'm used to sort of making or what you guys might be used to seeing. But hopefully this gave you a little bit of insight into how I like to sort of play Vanquish Souls. I was still really happy with just my performance in general. I did end up winning this round because I got I won like two out of the three games. And my team ultimately did end up winning with Jesse, with Rhyme Style beating Styriax and Jesse beating um, Joshua. You guys can check out all those games in the live stream that I did the other day for the event. But yeah, hopefully this was um, insightful, informative, something. I really do like the Vanquish Soul deck. I'm really proud of myself. Great games to Paulo. He's obviously very good, very talented, and he also went on to do very well in the UDS the next day as well. So, yeah. Okay, that's going to be it. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see maybe more analysis-type videos like this. I don't normally make them, but who knows. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Fast turn.